Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Zinedine Zidane's first spell as Real Madrid manager was nothing short of miraculous. He led the team to a 40-game unbeaten run and won a remarkable 8 finals out of 8. This included domestic cup competitions, the league in 16-17 and a record 3 Champions Leagues on the trots. Add to this winning the manager of the year in 2017 and his impact is clear. However, his second spell has not begun nearly as successfully. Despite not being far off top, the feeling has been that the team has been struggling at times given patchy results in the league and the Champions League. So let's have a look at these problems. But just before then, if you want to keep up with Real Madrid or any club of your choosing, check out OneFootball. You can get the latest stats for teams and players as well as match updates and so much more. Check it out through the link in the description. Statistically speaking, the drop-off has been clear. Initially, in his first spell, in 149 matches, he averaged 2.3 points per game, scoring 2.67 goals per game, whilst conceding 1.09 per match. Since returning in March, that has dropped to 1.52 points per game, and the goals conceded have gone up to 1.22. Their record after 9 matches in the league may have them in second, but compared to all teams over the past 5 seasons, the discrepancy becomes clear. It should be noted though that under Zidane, Madrid have never been particularly strong starters in the league, never having more than 21 points from the first 9 matches, as Zidane is an advocate of heavy rotation in the early season to allow freshness in the latter stages in the Champions League. When Zidane initially left the club, he cited being unable to motivate the same players and to give them more, so one would have assumed he would make major changes to the squad when he returned to compensate. However, in his first spell, we saw his reluctance to use the transfer market, with his only major transfers being Morata, Hernandez and Ceballos. This season was a major turnaround, spending big on Hazard, Jovic, Militao, Menri, Rodrigo and more. But how has this influx of players influenced his starting eleven? In the league, Zidane has used three main formations, being the 4-3-3, the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-4-2. But it's important to note that despite all the incoming players, Zidane has stuck mainly with the players he said he could not motivate towards the end of his spell, with Modric coming in as soon as he recovered from his injury. In fact, the only player not from his spell to have started over half their league matches at the time of recording is Courtois. So, his starting 11 has effectively stood still, meaning that it has aged up, with Madrid now having one of the older average starting 11s in the league. Let's move on to the tactics, and as Zidane said himself, I'm not the best coach tactically and I'll always say that. But either way, let's start with his on the ball tactics. Broadly speaking, Zidane has favoured a 4-3-3 or a variation that looks like this. The midfield is where some of the major problems have emerged. Tony Cruz and Casemiro have maintained their positions, whilst Luka Modric's injury problems have meant that Valverde has been the man often chose to fill in. The Madrid midfield 3 has had fairly defined roles, with Casemiro being the destroyer, Cruz the possession recycler and long pass sprayer, and Modric who did a bit of everything. But what set him apart was his high tempo ball progression, dribbling his team up the pitch before releasing an eye of the needle, defence splitting key pass. Valverde hasn't performed particularly poorly in any regard, however replacing a midfielder who's just won the Ballon d'Or is an uphill task, and statistically he hasn't quite matched up to him in most statistics on the ball. But it's unfair to compare a young midfielder to Modric, so we'll focus on Zidane's preferred midfield combination. It's clear, of the three, Casemiro is the least talented on the ball, and as a result, teams aim to filter the ball towards him in the build-up. When Cruz and Modric in particular were at their peak, they could counteract this. Modric was explosive enough to get away from his marker, to get into space to either receive the ball himself or to free up Cruz instead to receive the ball deep and move the ball up the pitch. So Casemiro's role was mainly to get the ball to Cruz and Modric, and he would drop deep between the centre-backs to achieve this, which would also free Marcelo and Carvajal to have the confidence to push higher up the pitch. But Cruz has never been the most mobile, and with Modric now 34 and less mobile, it has meant that teams can now cut out these two options more effectively. As a result, the Brazilian is now looked upon more during the build-up phase. This, combined with Casemiro now being allowed more flexibility to move into attacking zones during build-up, 
has meant that he has been given more responsibility on the ball, with his passes per game rising the last two seasons, as well as his key passes, long balls and dribbles. Modric is now less involved in the defensive phase, with less tackles and interceptions per game. So with Casemiro becoming more offensive, it puts the team in jeopardy, with the gap from defence to midfield growing. Casemiro looking for the more penetrative passing also means less time on the ball, with the passes per game reducing for both Cruz and Modric. This means less penetration for the team overall, as the quality of passing is a downgrade from Modric and Cruz to Casemiro. Zidane's 4-4-2 diamond in his first spell could withstand this, as Isco could provide another option which freed up Cruz and Modric even more. With a narrow attacking shape, Marcelo pushed right up and his quality on the ball was an extra build-up option. This season, with Hazard injured, often Vinicius, who likes to hug the touchline, at least initially, has played more often, slightly decreasing Marcelo's impact and build-up as he starts deeper, so that the two do not interfere with each other. On the flip side, with Carvajal being just as offensive, it means the wide midfielders are often having to keep in mind the gaps left behind, making them hesitant to push up as high, and thus reducing their impact when trying to get the team up the pitch. This defensive balance wasn't helped either, with Casemiro wanting to push higher up. Without him maintaining the shape between the centre-backs, the full-backs have had less confidence of cover in behind, and if they did choose to push up regardless, they could be counter-attacked against. This brings us to the next problem, which is the link from midfield to the attack. In his previous spell, the link was clear, with Isco being positioned in the hole of the diamond. In addition, Modric's dynamism, with and without the ball, meant that he was often in zone 14 pulling the strings as well. Even when they played a 4-3-3, Ronaldo was often wide left, cutting in into this link position, and Benzema could drop here as well, again linking the defence and the midfield during the build-up. All of this meant that they had several options. Since Zidane's return, this has changed. As discussed, the ageing and returning from injury Modric isn't able to get up and down between these key positions as much as he once could. In the 4-3-3, with Ronaldo now gone and Vinicius now in, it means that Benzema is the focal point of the attack, and as a result, he pushes right up the pitch and is less likely to be found in these deep link-up positions. And as discussed, Vinicius attacks the byline more often, again leaving this massive gap in the zone 18 link position. James Rodriguez has played in this creative role at times this season, however always in a 3 with Casemiro and Cruz. As a result, his presence at the midfield increases the defensive demands on these two, which would lead to the previously discussed problems due to Cruz's lack of mobility and Casemiro's positional indiscipline at times. They've tried a 4-3-3 on occasion this season, with Jovic alongside Benzema, However, this only highlighted their problems in creating a link. The hope is that as Hazard settles in and becomes a regular, he can become the missing link player to fix this. But without that, as a result, Madrid have begun using crosses as an attacking crutch. Crossing is a perfectly valid tactic, and teams like Klopp's Liverpool use it well. Crosses with a well thought out attacking plan can work well, but when used due to a lack of attacking alternative, it is not ideal. Cristiano Ronaldo, their best aerial attacker, is no longer at the club, and his replacements in Vinicius and Hazard do not replace his output in the air, but in Bale, Benzema and Jovic, they still have plenty of aerial ability. However, Bale has a tendency to stay out wide, and with Benzema and Jovic only having played together once, it means that generally they have less aerial threats during open play. However, their headed shots per game have increased, but with the overall shots per game falling, it means that the headed shots make up for a greater percentage of their shots, and headed shots tend to be of lower quality than those of the feet. The defensive shortcomings are linked to the offensive ones. They face problems on the counter-attack, as their midfield is not mobile enough to support Casemiro, who himself pushes higher up the pitch than he used to. This, combined with the high-flying wingers, means often they are without numbers back to defend the play. This is in contrast to his first season, where they would drop into a more disciplined 4-4-1-1 during the defence. Despite these problems, Madrid is still high up the table and could go on to have a successful season. But these are just some of the elements the team may want to improve during the season. But what else have you noticed about Zidane's tactics this season and in his last spell? I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.